Hello and welcome to Sailing Prima Barcavella podcast. Prima Barcavella stands for First Sailboat in Italian. This is a podcast where Jennifer and I are trying to meet as many people as possible who are out sailing and living the lifestyle that we want to live someday. We're trying to meet them and learn as much as we can. Today we have a talk with Chris, Janie, and they have a handsome son, Talon, and their cute little fur baby, Scout. They're on Sailing Cloud 2, and they have a 2023 Lagoon 40 that they picked up at a boat show. We talk all about that, from going from a monohull to a catamaran, and maybe someday back again. Please check us out on Instagram, YouTube, and support us on Patreon if you can at sailingpb.com or Sailing Prima Barcavella. And also check out Sailing Cloud 2 on Instagram. I hope you enjoy the chat. Thanks. We got the, the Bahamas glow going on here. Oh, very nice. So you uh you got What's your little stow- you got your little stowaway down for the night, huh? Got him down. Tonight was actually a pretty easy one, but we've got a, a little routine we go through, yeah. as I'm sure you've you're familiar with. Yeah. <laughs> How old are I've yours? Got, you said you I've, I've got uh I got mini me's myself. They're older now, but I remember the uh the routines. It brings back a lot of really wonderful nostalgic memories of uh putting the boys down and doing the whole routine and the baths and the story oh, time and <laughs> yeah. I, I miss those days, man. It, good. You know, everybody says it. Everybody says it. You're going to hear it. It goes by so fast. Treasure those moments. <laughs> but it's so true, man. It's crazy yeah. how old my boys are now. I mean, they're, gosh, they're 19 and 16 now, which is totally insane. Oh. I can't believe that it has been that fast. That went by oh like God. that. I, so, I yeah. can't even imagine yeah. him being like yeah. more, more than a baby. It's oh, so yeah. weird. He took his first steps today. Oh, yay. Hi, Janie. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, awesome. he just walked hey. today on a, on a boat, oh, not that's... on land yet. <laughs> so he's got sea legs. <laughs> he does. He better does. better than any of us, I guess. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. I have I have All the right, best I memories so. of um, my one of my best friends from college came to visit. And it was when my older one, Angelo, took his first steps. And it's just like you know imprinted in your mind forever those first steps you never forget it is so so special so beautiful i love it for you guys it's so great yeah and he was so stoked like he knew he did something important he was just like <laughs> like laughing and giggling like so proud of himself it was cool it was very cool that is so great so great you know hey um you know um when when we had ours we had i have a two and the younger one when he was seven weeks old um, we stuck him on an airplane and we went to Germany on an international assignment. And I want to say Whoa. to you what people said to us, we were an inspiration to people to be able to travel with the young one. And I want to say to you, you're such an inspiration to travel and be on. I think so many people are so afraid of of taking that leap with having a little one and doing something like you're doing. So kudos to you guys. I mean, awesome that you guys are Thanks, doing man. what you're doing. Thank you. Yeah, Thanks, yeah. Man. How's it, how's yeah. it been? I, I mean, to Janie. Yeah. Awesome. I mean, that's, Oh, sorry. Our connection's a little bit weak. We're getting it's some. Okay. No worries. This year. Um, I say to Janie, like I'm less, I'm less nervous on a passage on this boat with him than I am driving down the highway in the car. Yeah. 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 I'm uh, so much more terrified on, on the road. I think, I guess, you know, he's our first, so we don't have a ton of frame of reference with the previous child, but the thing is, like, it it would be difficult in a house, and so it's just Mm -hmm. difficult on a boat. I I don't know, I don't know that it's too different. I don't, yeah, yeah, I mean, raising a baby is... It's hard, hard, but it's it's like, at least it's hard in the Bahamas. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) uh, But he's been amazing. I mean... he does better than us in a lot of in a lot of ways because he doesn't know like when the boat gets a little bit rocky he's just like woo and we're like oh this is kind of nerve-wracking right now but he he our gnarliest um passages he's slept through the worst of it and a lot of of cruising parents will say that that toddlers and infants sleep through the craziest motion and the noises the Mm -hmm. lap but he's he's in the starboard uh forward cabin so when we're bucking and like hobby yeah. horsing up and down it's he's all of it and he sleeps straight he sleeps through. through the whole thing he'll so. sleep through the anchor coming up and down and his cabins up forward he's like totally it's blown us chain. away yeah that is awesome i mean we were told yeah. that we were told to run the vacuum cleaner and make as much noise as possible 
people when they're sleeping yeah. and actually yeah. Yeah. through it. And it's great to do that because the alternative to that is that like if you don't do that and then the slightest peep wakes them up and then you're you know their schedule's right. all a nightmare for everybody and there's a you know a cry fest that happens. So it's better to be loud all the time. It's so great that you guys are yeah, the boat is making noise all the time. So oh you guys are gonna be in good shape with him being able to sleep through anything. So <laughs> yeah. 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 Cool. So. yeah. It's been really cool. It's been cool having him along and just getting to see him in these environments and watching him explore. And I mean, he's not going to remember oh, it, but yeah. cool for us. But we'll remember it. And well, I think I'm realizing that that's what matters. Well, here's the thing. My kids don't remember Germany because they were so young when we did our international assignment. But the memories they have um, are like from pictures and videos that they saw like a few years later. But that stuff stuck with them. Like they both want to go back to Germany really badly. They want to experience Europe. So the stuff that you're doing, even though they might you know, might not remember it, he's going to see it later through all these videos and pictures that you guys have been posting. And he'll, you know, be so excited about that lifestyle and what he did. And and it's going to be great memory. I mean, it'd be great in a way, not memories, but great like I see experience that. That, that he can look back on. Oh yeah, yeah. He's gonna he's gonna treasure that That's as much point. as you treasure. I know it. Yeah. I like that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So back to your point of um of of sort of showing other people that that this is possible. Um I always remember before we had a kid, um we were both like heavy travelers. Mm -hmm. Some boat friends are walking by. Hey. <laughs> um oh wait. Bring them in. Bring them in. I know I thought they were. Um <laughs> no, they're actually strangers. No, oh wait, no, are they? Is... Oh, it is them. Yeah, uh, anyways. Yeah. Um Nobody's we a stranger in the dock. <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. We um we would still travel extensively before we sailed. And I remember clearly, like multiple occasions, there would be um um older people who would see that we were traveling, living this travel lifestyle, and, and they would always say the same thing. They'd say, Ha, huh, oh, you don't have any kids, right? And I'd be like, No, and they'd be like, Well, try traveling, you have kids. And I always remember in my head, I'd be like, you know what? I will try traveling when I have kids. <laughs> I'm going to show you. <laughs> and while I was traveling, I would meet other people that were traveling with kids. Yeah, and it's that like, was the coolest. Yeah, I, I get that it can be a little bit intimidating, probably. But once you're out doing it, it really doesn't feel that crazy. Yeah, yeah. The the kids have a great experience. I mean, once they get older and you start to, like, socialize them, too. I mean, what a great, like, I just hear nothing about great stories about um, kids traveling with their parents and living a different kind of lifestyle and the exposure. And then those kids end up being just m marvelous people. I mean, honestly, like yeah, I, so great. many of them turn out so great. Yeah. But also, I mean, credit to you guys and, and what you're doing. I think that you pass a lot of that on to him as well. I mean, being travelers, being adventurers, being, you know, energetic go-getters i mean you guys have been busy i can see that you guys are very busy and like you've done a lot and accomplished a lot and you're going to continue to and that stuff passes on to your children too so kudos to you guys again um but yeah Thanks, let's, let's go back nice to the time. beginning though like yeah, is, let's go back to the beginning sure. because like we haven't even done like the intro yet like i mean i think a lot of the listeners um will like to hear like who you are you know what you're doing what you're sailing on how you got to this so can you go through like a little bit of an intro for the listeners Gosh, well, how do we start? Do we start? Um, well, we met in college. Paraphrase this part, Ooh. though. <laughs> yeah, we yeah, have a long, like... we have a, we have a very storied love story. Um, <laughs> That's a good place to start. We love those stories. <laughs> um, well, Janie, you can give a little bit of where you're from, like not. Okay, well, born and raised in Little Rock, Arkansas, landlocked, um, yeah. but we grew up on the water, on lakes, and we had a house um, in Florida on the Panhandle, and I was born and raised there. We went, we met in college in Savannah, Georgia. We went to Savannah College of Art and Design mm -hmm. um, and dated in college, broke up after college i moved to montana <laughs> for almost eight years even more landlocked than Arkansas, yeah by so, uh, far living a yeah. completely different life and um in a nutshell way fast forward we got back together rekindled, re rekindled <laughs> and i moved to the outer banks of north carolina where well, chris is from and has lived his whole life and that is where sailing came to fruition for both of us at the same time and that was about six years ago. Yes. That we well, got back sailing together. had been a dream of mine, mm -hmm. even when we knew each other in college. True, um, yeah. But I had never sailed. It was just the dream. Because my, I mean, the story really starts with 
my dad who was Bermudian and he was a sailor in Bermuda, like his whole life, he built a 28 foot Venus, um, catch. Oh. Um, and when he, he, when he met my mom, the two of them sailed from Bermuda down through the West Indies on the boat that he built there in Bermuda. Wow. And That's I would awesome. always see these pictures of them. And this is like the 1980s. This is before oh. it was the cool trendy thing to do, like yeah. hop on a sail <laughs> and go like they, I can't imagine doing it when they did it. So this is the late seventies or early eighties. Those were no, the original rock stars. It was the mid Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 This yeah. was this was like just after, um, like people were still using celestial navigation. Like I remember my dad bought a sextant and then didn't end up using it because sat navs just came out, so we didn't need the sextant. So we never learned how to use that sextant. Yeah. That we had. But now we have it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now we got it. So, um, so I would see these photos of them sailing and hear these stories. And I was like, that just sounds so amazing. But when we mm. moved to the States from Bermuda, he had sold the boat and sailing just sort of wasn't a part of our lives. So I actually never learned growing up. It was just sort of a part of my history it was the dream. When we were in college, I think I talked about it. Mm -hmm. Like, this is what I want to do someday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's interesting that you went to Savannah and that never came up. Like, let's go out on a sail or something, or like that. Gosh, didn't yeah, no, like, like, just so busy with art sure. school. I yeah, think. yeah, it was yeah. such a different. But you, you did talk about it, but that was never a part of. Mm -hmm. That was never. We were just no, and there was college. never even the, yeah. at that point. There was still not even anything to like grab onto. It, it really, it really started. Our sailing life started when my dad again ended up buying a 1974 bowman 36 mm -hmm. uh, originally designed as a catch actually technically i think it's a yawl originally mm -hmm. and um he removed the mizzen converted it into a sloop this is in bermuda again after he moved back to bermuda mm -hmm. and then he got he was fixing it up in bermuda and then basically just got too old to like continue this refit on this old boat beautiful classic blue water cruiser and I kind of came to Janie one day and I was like, what do you think about like me trying to get this boat from my dad and us maybe like living on it and learning to sail? Huh. And I was surprised at how keen you were. Well, yeah. So full credit to Chris. This was not at all my dream. This was never a part of my <laughs> plan. But, yeah. but again, neither was moving to the Outer Banks and being with Chris. But um, again. What worked really well and why this is such a mutually beneficial partnership, I think, is that we were also building an Airbnb business mm. and we had decided that we wanted to try renting our house out in the summer and we needed a place to live in the summer. Mm -hmm, really. And so that's when that is what happened. Yeah, yeah, that's when cloud one kind of really fit was a, the idea fit more into. Yes. Our life. So I'm originally right. from the Outer Banks where short-term rentals, vacation rentals is just a huge yeah, thing. And I, I saw how well other people would do with it. And so mm -hmm. when I bought my first house in 2016, it was in the back of my mind, like maybe one day I could turn this into a vacation rental. But that's yeah. the whole right. paradox is like, well, if I'm going to rent out my house, like where do I live? Yeah. And so that's where. That is where the boat came in. You're right. It was oh, and the mutual yeah benefit is that mm -hmm. I manage Airbnbs for a living. I just I'm I'm a property manager. I majored in interior design. We knew that Cloud One was going to need a massive refit, mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. we sort of just pulled all of our skills together. Yeah, and that's that's how that's that happened. Perfect. Yep. So I love this idea. Like the re a lot of the reason I do this podcast is that I'm trying to learn tips and tricks and share it with everybody. And this is like, how do we all get out there? We're you're living the love lifestyle that we all want to live and so this is a great tip because we're trying to do something similar um we have we had rented our place through airbnb in the past and the thought had crossed my mind what if we could rent our place full time and we move on to a sailboat and like this mm -hmm. ideal situation to get us into that transition period so the you know the question is like how did that transition period go for you guys to like how do other people kind of follow in those footsteps is this something that other people could do basically um it came the transition came pretty easily for, I'm all just talking about myself for a second. Yeah. Easily for me because I had already picked up one life and moved it to the Outer Banks. So I was kind of, I was good at just that shuffle and I didn't own a lot. Um, but I'd also worked in the forest service in Montana and I was used to a rustic, um, very outdoorsy environment. Uh, yes. Yeah, super minimalist. Um, so I was pretty stoked on the idea, actually. Yeah, yeah I was like, ready. Yeah, it's definitely, <laughs> it's definitely not for everyone. No, like you need to be cool, like 
living with less, living in a small space. You need a right. pretty strong relationship. You need to like be able to test. It was definitely a test of our relationship. I mean, you're moving into a, a very small space and yeah. sometimes it moves. Like yeah. it's, sometimes it's like stressful. Like even if you're in a marina, unless it's full 360 degree protection, which a lot, a lot aren't including ours, you know, yeah. the wind blows hard, your house starts rocking. It's, it, it can be stressful. And there's a, a huge learning curve as well, but it really yeah. felt like I love I love two of your posts that you have. One, one of your posts talks about, um, you, you mentioned it often, like moving onto a tiny house that floats on the water. And the other one is like you say, like having to be comfortable with small spaces. <clears throat> I love one of your questions. My favorite post that you guys ever did was the question and answer posts. And one of them was from somebody that said, uh, <clears throat> do you shit and shower space? And like your response was, yeah, don't you? Like your bathroom likes the same, but ours is just a lot tighter. Right. Yeah. 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 It's um. I mean, it's just a very, it's a, it's a variation of exactly what yeah. we do on the end. I feel like most most people could do it. If I mean, anyone who would want to do it has to sort of have that dream. And if you have sure. the dream, I I think you're already most of the way there. To like, if you're fantasizing about that kind of lifestyle, then you can probably do it um yeah. definitely not for everyone but important we took to, to it really date. well yeah very important to set a date and then work towards that date of the department. yeah i think that we the way that we inched into it by um having the boat in our hometown and moving aboard but not immediately cruising um, yeah, that's a good that point gave too. us the ability to mm -hmm. adapt to live aboard life while yep. still being in a familiar environment that's not changing abruptly. Right. So that's a good point. Yeah, I, I would definitely advise doing it that way if you can. Living aboard really just gets you used to the boat and the space, and we huge game changer. Yeah, we would just yeah. take it out when we could, learn the mm -hmm. basics, yeah. learn how to sail. Um, take it slow, but, but it really is almost like the. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Finish your thought. What's up? Oh, I was just going to go back to the, um, the, the, um, the concept of like living on a boat, renting out a house. Mm -hmm. Um, that was again, something I remembered from when I would just air travel and backpack, I would meet, um, people slightly older than us. Usually they would have families, but they were still traveling. And I would always ask them like, how, how are you, how are you doing this? Like, how are you affording this? Cause for, I always thought it was just like a young person's thing to do. Like when you're in, in your early twenties to go backpacking around the world. And I found a very common theme was like, oh, we own a property and mm -hmm. we just have either long term or, or, short, or short term, short term. And that would be funding their travels. And I was just yeah. like, dang, that dang. seems like a really yeah. good deal. We yeah. love talking about how we finance all of this. Um, We're happy to get into that at some point. I know yeah. it was on your on your list. So, mm -hmm. yeah, let's put that eventually before we get there. Um, just for those listening, I know it's really always a, an interesting topic for people to understand what your boat are, is that you're on. So when you first transitioned on, you were on cloud one and what type of boat was that? That was a monohull, but what was the uh, type, make and model and all this stat, stats? So that was the 1974 Bowman 36. Oh, it was your dad's dad boat. Bought. That was, so not the one that he built. This is the one that he bought after he, he sold the boat that he built. Gotcha. That eventually got crashed into a reef oh. by a uh, storm oh, no. after he had owned it. Um, there's some like really sad photos of it, like half sunk in Bermuda on this reef. But oh. so he, he then bought the Bowman, which had also been run onto a reef in Bermuda, and the keel was really badly damaged. Yeah. And so he had the boat hauled out and he repaired the keel himself and began fixing it up. Um, so she was a 1974 Bowman 36 classic blue water that term gets thrown around a lot now i feel like blue water it's yeah. a blue water vessel it's like no not really actually this is like <laughs> the, the the bowman 36 is one of the few boats approved for the golden globe race oh, so it's okay. true it's like a true blue water boat right funny enough like not really that well designed for live aboard like not i mean no not at all or yeah. designed that's not why he's like, made. Yeah, yeah you usually get one or the other you usually get a blue water boat or you get like comfort and space yeah exactly. right exactly right which is kind of where a refit came in we tried to design re, sort of redesign it to be more comfortable oh and we i mean we did big which time. we did yeah yeah so oh, yeah um, i saw photos it was beautiful what you guys did to it thanks yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. a lot of work but uh so yeah, 36 feet long. She had an 11 and a half foot beam. She had a full keel. So she was um, almost 20,000 pounds. Um, 
she was originally a yawl, but the mizzen had been removed. So she had a really short um, mast as a mm -hmm. sloop because she was originally a catch. Um, so she was not going to win any race, any races, but she had a very like high comfort ratio and just heavy displacement. Was Beautiful. the mass was the mass low enough for ICW travel under the bridges and all that? Yeah, yeah, by far. I think she was around like 50 we've, feet or so. Yeah, I think because of that, we've always been, whatever boat we have, we want it compliant with yeah. ICW. Yeah. yeah, very nice. Right. <laughs> very cool. That was cloud one. And then at some point, yeah, you transitioned to cloud two, which I know what it is, but let's tell the readers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cloud two is a 2023 Lagoon 40. So we did buy her new. So basically the exact opposite of cloud one, mm -hmm. <laughs> like a brand new catamaran production boat. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Really as far from cloud one as you could possibly get, but hashtag hear us out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, here we go. I hear the groans. I, hear, yeah. I can hear the groans in the audience from here. Oh, lagoon. <laughs> we are obsessed with this boat. We'll go ahead and get that out of the way. Yeah. But, um, but you know, when we found out, we were pregnant and we decided that we did want to after our first season cruising the bahamas on cloud one mm -hmm. which was amazing and perfect at that time like exactly what we wanted so good um yeah yeah that was the trial run like okay we for sure want to keep doing this right mm -hmm. how do we want to do it if we're now looking ahead to like maybe five to ten years of this with a toddler mm -hmm. moving transitioning to like childhood and then we came down to the, the modern production cat. It's also, right. um, you know, it's it's a home for 12 months out of the year now. True, we live aboard year-round. So. And we're both self-employed business owners who do a lot of work from the boat. So we wanted to be able to have a vessel that can accommodate a working space, mm -hmm. um, a crawling, a toddler. We also have a cat. And so comfort mm -hmm. and focusing on anchor life was a major and slip part, life. yeah was a major part of this decision you hear the you hear the oh sure like it's comfortable at anchor it's like yeah yeah that's that's <laughs> it's right. what we love and for you know i think we just really want to break the stigma we've had so many conversations about this now is that the the whole either or debate you can only yep. either be for monohulls or catamarans yeah, yeah we love both of them mm -hmm. um we may nice. go back to you know a, a snazzy monohull at some point when talon's older yeah i don't know yet maybe another catamaran but we've done both and we love both yeah. both of them are annoying both of them are <laughs> romantic and magical you know it's right. it is what it is whatever I'm... chapter you're in that's yeah. that's what you need yeah that's exactly right. I think that is something that people really need to take into consideration is where is your lifestyle at at that point? Where is your life at at that point? Right now, you're with a small child. You need to be you want to be on something that's more comfortable. I we as well. Sure. Like I did, yeah. my, I did all my training on a Lagoon 38. And then, you know, I charged. Oh, so nice. yeah. yeah. So I mean, I was a huge fan of Lagoon from the very beginning. And then um, when I went to Bearboat Charter, we couldn't afford, you know, a catamaran when we went to charter in the Caribbean. So then we the only thing we could afford were the monohulls so we started bareboat chartering monohulls and it was one monohull out after another and then we would circle back around and we did some catamaran chartering again so we've gone back and forth and yeah like you say oh we wow love them both. yeah we love them both for different reasons yeah we hate them both for different reasons but for it's sure. like it really going to depend on where you're at what you can afford where you're at in your lifestyle yeah i totally agree i don't fault you at all for going catamaran monohull I know a lot of people are rolling their eyes yeah. and they're huffing and puffing about, oh, you sold out to the to the catamaran crew. But yep. really, I mean, Happily. it's what you the time and it's what you can be into, what you have to have for your lifestyle at that time. So I totally understand. But yeah, there's that age old yeah. debate of what's better, you know, what sales better. And, and there's all it's these different so criteria silly. people try to figure out, so right? Silly. Also, yeah. like, who cares? Like, why yeah. do you care yeah. what it's we sell? <laughs> We like have, sail the boat you want to sail and we're going to sail the boat we want to sail like, really, yeah. one thing we've observed is that the most supportive stoked people um yeah do, here you say this better you say the, it the best. people that the the most yeah the people that are like pumped for us just to see us on a boat that we're happy on sailing are the people that are like also actively sailing and cruising and, and living and they this just, lifestyle they get it and they the most understand. judgy people are the ones that are doing the least amount of sailing or not sailing <laughs> the at all chair sailors and it's know? like i do get it when we had a classic blue water sail a blue water boat like the quintessential sailboat um yeah i got it i'd look at the 
at the production cats or even the production monos and just be like yeah you don't know what a real sailboat is but it's like <laughs> what does that even mean like no. we sail so much more on this boat we feel so safe we feel so comfortable yeah um that's great and it's been killer but gosh not to knock monohulls yeah. there's still just an element of sexy sailing that we have lost yeah. currently you I know miss that for sure. <laughs> yeah give and take yeah i mean i mean you have a great statement in one of your posts that says look we we've gone over the catamarans but we're not crossing oceans we're not planning on crossing the pacific mm -hmm. anytime soon we're just going to coastal cruise we're going to go to the bahamas right. and back and that and the other and that's the perfect kind of boat for that a production catamaran you get all the living space you need all the comfort you need and you can still sail it which is fantastic so yeah i totally get it i that's fantastic what you're doing so let's go back to the Thank to the you. transition and the job stuff like that's something that everybody's always curious about and all of us that are really trying to make this transition happen or try to find some way to transition in how how are you guys doing it? Do you mind talking about that and giving us some details and some tips and tricks and, you know, insight into how we can do it too? Yeah. Gladly. Mm -hmm. Maybe one thing we'll start maybe with, um, uh, there, there seem to be like maybe two, two ways people tend to like fund this lifestyle. There's the camp of like, let's just sell everything yeah. and buy a boat and just like cruise off. And we don't care. We're just leaving everything behind. Mm -hmm. Um, we find that is probably true with like more of the younger population doing this. Um, and it's sort of like the maybe more, yeah, sexy way of doing it. It's very romanticized. Um, <laughs> we looked at that and we were like, that is terrifying. Yeah, <laughs> that wasn't, that wasn't for us. <laughs> like we, we, <laughs> we, we owned a home and the thought of just like selling the base that was actually, and the, the, something that is, turning a profit um to then what was it to 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 to, to get rid of an app a appreciating asset um that turns a profit to then buy a depreciating asset that doesn't make you any money just seemed like a poor choice for us <laughs> right yeah uh, so um we both still work six months out of the year. So the Outer Banks is very seasonal. So we grind, like we grind in the summer to mm -hmm. afford this lifestyle. We said we bought a new boat. We didn't pay cash. We have a loan. So it's basically, we look at it as a house. Like it's our home. It's a mortgage. Yeah. Any of people yeah. have a mortgage. And actually when we bought it, um, interest rates were still a bit, quite a bit lower than they are now. So it's actually less than what most mortgages would even be right now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it'll allowed us to then keep a house. We, yeah. Lever we took out equity in our first house to buy a second house. So we have two properties that then generate rental income. Right now, during the winter, we have long-term six-month tenants in the homes. And in the summer, we have short-term Airbnb tenants. And we rough it on the boat. Mm -hmm. Rough yeah. it on. That's, yeah, that's brilliant, though. <laughs> Are you guys going back and forth? Like, I think um, I didn't understand some of the – I wouldn't follow it exactly, but it sounded like – the first season or two, like you had cruised down the coast to the Bahamas and then you came back to the Outer Banks. Are you mm -hmm. still planning on doing that or are you just going to keep on going in the direction you're going? Yeah, we still work. So we both have our own businesses outside of the rental business. So I run a production company. Um, I do photography and video production, mostly video Shout production. Shout out. What's the name of it? <laughs> oh, Swell Productions. <laughs> the best. Um, and then... Janie. You said weddings and we do. I do weddings. A lot of a, a lot of the bread and butter is is the, the wedding industry on the Outer Banks is huge, and I've been do, shooting weddings for like ten years now. So oh, yeah, I'm sure. Again, very seasonal. I can grind yeah. really hard in the summer for us is seasonal. for six months, mm -hmm. and then um, and then take off for six months when when there's not a lot. But I also do some commercial work, which <clears throat> if I need to, you know, we've had the discussion. If mm -hmm. something comes up, book Janie and Talon in the slip. I can fly back to the states and shoot a gig, and then fly back and i can edit from anywhere mm -hmm. yeah perfect i just need to be present on the ground when i'm shooting and then you've got and your on, business on top of our two houses that we airbnb i uh manage a handful of other properties that are owned by different people on the outer banks mm -hmm. and all of that is part of the summer grind um pretty much all of them come to a halt in the winter but throughout winter i'm able to work remote um on the rental platform to take bookings for the next season. So mm -hmm. right now I'm 
managing um, communications with different reservations that are booking for summer 2024. Chris is right. taking deposits for 2024 weddings. Right. So we still got a little bit of income mm -hmm. in the winter. But yeah. back to the point of like sell everything and just go. So a lot of the cruisers that you see like year round cruising have probably done that. Like they've got a healthy savings because they mm -hmm. just sold everything. But that is probably going to have to end at some point and they're going to have to go back to work. So we've met a lot of those cruisers and that's fine. Like yeah, that's, that's what they want to do. A lot of them are younger. Yeah. Um, we never were really super attracted to that idea, like having a ticking clock, yeah. like a bank account that we just see getting lower and lower every day. We wanted to do more of a six on six off cruising lifestyle where we, you know, we, we still work mm -hmm. and it works well for us now. And we look toward the future at maybe eventually taking off more and more time if we can find more remote work sure. setups which or, is, yeah, the airbnb yeah. airbnb management is this um something that you were able to find through just like um like pursuing it online or did you know people and you made connections and friends with people who had owned properties and you said hey let me manage it for you or is this something that because like that's something that would be ideal for us like jennifer and i would be great at like we can manage that. We, we've managed our own home on Airbnb and we actually had it on VRBO as well. And, you know, I think yeah, yeah. that's something that, you know, we could easily do, but I don't know how to make those connections. Like, how is that happening? Um, well, I had a little bit when I was living in Montana, I was not doing Airbnb. I was working guest relations at a ski resort. So in a way it was kind of similar. Um, and when we came, when I came to the Outer Banks, it was a lot of small town conversations word of mouth it's a lot of word of mouth um we yeah, started nice. our we started with one airbnb and this was all uh mm -hmm. before pandemic i mean gosh covid kind of plays a big part in this at, it does, at yeah. some point but um <laughs> yeah this is pre-pandemic uh word of mouth and it was a lot i mean it was a lot of hustling when i moved there i was still paying off my student loans never missed a payment i was very very driven to get this private school, massive loan done. Yeah. So I was trying to work right off the bat. I wanted to be my own boss. And so I started uh, by cleaning houses for huge were, yeah. um, cleaning lot. rental company, like the the 20 bedroom beach house, those, those companies. I was cleaning houses. I was deep cleaning in the winter. And eventually I was, I mean, I was just trying to make make a name for myself and it and yeah. it worked out it just took it took a couple years i think it depends where you um, are but it's fun. we live in a good place for it i will say that word of mouth is everything and, mm -hmm. and i had i had lived there long enough that i had sort of the local card like people knew who i was oh, right right street they trend. they knew that like oh chris, chris oh chris mm -hmm. hannon's wife manages airbnbs mm -hmm. people are looking for someone to manage their property and people I, will try to manage on their own and they don't want to do that anymore so try and find someone else to do it for them i, I love the hustle you guys are hustling and oh I yeah love it. you guys are doing such great stuff it went from the massive company cleaning to um cleaning for airbnbs and so i kind of had my foot in the door by then and then i just kind of backed off of cleaning and started yeah managing the properties yeah gotcha, gotcha. very cool yeah um, yeah you guys are doing such great stuff i love it so much um thanks man I want to I want to mention something else just on a side note. I was thinking about uh your cat Scout. What a cool cat, by the way. <laughs> but like, you know, one of the videos that I love was um I was just cruising through your videos and there was this one video where he's sitting, he she is it she he or she? He, it's she, she yeah. She, she's sitting on a platform that's kind of swinging back and forth as the boat's rocking. And I was like, you got a cat hammock. I love it. I love that yeah. so much. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was one of the best parts of having a monohole was we had a gimbaled cat perch. A gimbaled and, cat perch. Yeah. Did you like create it? She um it hung on one of the grab, you know, the grab rails. I don't know the yeah, grab, yeah grab rail. And that's so good. I and love I think it. it's been so handy on rough passages because that so was fun. that was her point of balance. Yeah, that was, it was on the <laughs> it was along the side of the boat. So we would when we would heel to one side, she'd swing out into the open, but when we'd swing back the other way, she would just like smack into the wind. <laughs> <laughs> She would just tolerate it. She would just lay there, like swing out. Lot, there's out. so many cruising cats and dogs. I don't think yeah. they love yeah. passages very much. How did uh how did Scat how did Scout and Talon get along? Are they doing all right together? Yeah. Did I say Talon? Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Um, Scout definitely tolerates. She's warming them. up to him. It's taken some time. Yeah. You know, she's 
she's a cat she doesn't you have to earn her affection <laughs> she'll be like laying down so peacefully and talon will be so giddy like oh i'm gonna just wants to go say hi and like reaches out to <laughs> scout and scout just like gets up like yeah just luckily, scowls at him and just walks away <laughs> she has a lot of good spots on the boat where she's you know inaccessible to him so that's good very cool is there any trouble with the cat going back and forth the Bahamas or anything like that? Is that any kind of a, a difficulty? Do you have to do any sort of like quarantine or extra quarantine? No, there's um, it's actually a pretty simple process. I can't say the same for other places in the Caribbean, but Bahamas has it pretty locked in. You do have to obtain a permit and a vet visit and certification, um, but it's it's not that expensive and we don't let her off the boat. So I don't I can't speak for people who have dogs. Right. Um, but yeah, she's a boat cat. And so, you know, nobody even really know. I mean, we still go through all the legal process, but she never. They leaves. would never know. Yeah, yeah. they would never know. <laughs> Unless yeah, they boarded. I, I, but... love, mm -hmm. I, I love so much that people, dogs and cats with them cruising. Yeah, and I have yeah. so much respect for that. And it's just a beautiful thing. But the, the idea of having a dog, though, like and having to bring them to shore or like having to walk them like the extra, you know, effort. Like, I feel like a cat is a great thing to have on a boat because it's kind of low effort, you know, but it's so easy. great to have. It's great to have a little fur baby with you, you know? Yeah. You know, if you think about, um, gosh, when we were going down the East Coast a couple, a month ago, a couple months, and it was like 40, 35 degrees at night, having a cat in the bed with you oh, yeah. overnight, she we didn't have up, heat. Oh my warm. gosh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's great. And then on the flip side, 30, 40 degrees to imagine having to go to shore to let the to walk oh, the dogs. yeah yeah some people have those little pet mats and the, they can train the dogs to pee on the oh, mat. that's so impressive but some dogs like won't take to it yeah and you have to oh yeah get them ashore right yeah, yeah that's that's gotta that's gotta be tough and like especially some of the dogs i've seen like big dogs you gotta get them in the dinghy you gotta get them to shore you got oh, oh i don't know that's, how to do it. that sounds like a nightmare to me <laughs> i think cats do really surprisingly well in boats i mean they were considered good yeah. luck on that's right yeah. back in the like yeah mm -hmm. back in the day oh i don't think i knew that okay yeah, yeah it was i um, think it's because they would kill the mice yeah that, that oh, would yeah, of course people like on ships <laughs> yeah. always wanted oh, they're the best for the keeping ship. bugs down too right they kill all the bugs the spiders the roaches, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah that's a great thing to have. you got your flies for us yeah yeah <laughs> so it looks like you're drinking downer or it's a baby downer i'm not sure what you put the baby down so you got a drink in your hand what's the drink you're drinking oh i like baby downer baby downer yeah i like that's that good yeah hey, cheer cheers um <laughs> oh, oh, cheers, yeah, man. Yeah. cheers. Mm -hmm. oh you've been to thailand uh yeah got the, chang, so, got the chang koozie yeah so we um we did a sabbatical i guess a sabbatical more like an unpaid leave sabbatical uh last year we did four weeks around guadalupe uh we sailed a beneteau 38 and that was our test you know you're talking about like test out the lifestyle we want to live and um i mean we have already chartered but it was only like a you know we'd only do like a weekend or a week charter but last december uh, we were like, let's go big. Um, let's try to take off the end of December, which I get vacation that, but then let's uh, do like a two month uh, unpaid leave. Um, I tried to get my boys to come with me for the weeks in December. One of them got so sick, he couldn't come, but the other one came and we did two weeks with him. Then we did two weeks without him around Guadalupe. And then we went to Thailand. <clears throat> it's a long story. Wow. Went to visit one of my, <laughs> went to visit one of my best friends um who lives there and he's been trying to get us there for eight years and we finally were like look we're gonna take time off we're coming and so we went to thailand for 10 weeks and we sailed there for 10 days Dang. through the andaman sea oh it was epic man i'm How telling you it was, we're gonna have to ask you about that yeah epic yeah so we sailed out of phuket oh man that's a whole podcast we're we're going to do a podcast just jennifer and i are going to do one next after this one and we're going to talk all about guadalupe first because there's a lot to talk about there and then we're going to thailand and the whole adventure that we had there i mean yeah we have to listen to that we would love to tell you tell you about it because it'll take up a whole another two hours but oh my god just epic beyond epic so much you fun hear so little about sailing that area oh i know and um yeah it must just be incredible mm -hmm. the sailing was i i can't describe it i i don't have the words right now to describe it but we came out of phuket and went wow. down through the and sea and we stopped at all these little islands and the islands are like, I mean, they're magical. Like you can't even imagine. It's something out of another world. And just the the like, like the blueness of the water, the clarity. Uh, we, we we found Nemo. I mean, it was crazy. <laughs> what you found Nemo? We found it's Nemo. We found Nemo like pretty times. easy sailings, pretty straightforward. Good anchorage options. The sailing was pretty straightforward. We sailed one time nine hours straight, and it 
eye in the blink of an eye. We thought like, oh, this is going to be like, you know, we're going to have to grind this out. But, you know, after nine hours of sailing, we were both like taking turns at the wheel and um, it was over in like no time. And we're like, this was great. It was beautiful conditions. Now there's different times to go. There's a good time to go and a bad time to go. We went, um, that would have been like January ish when we were sailing South. And um, the only thing to be concerned about was really like um, they, it's strange. Like there's so much fishing happening there and there's so many, these whimsical fish, fishing boats like i've got to show you guys some photos or look through some of my stuff from then that we posted but these boats are everywhere and then they have these like refrigerator sized styrofoam blocks that have like lines attached to them so we had to be careful of those where everybody was always spotting them and scouting them and telling you know whoever's at the helm hey look out there's one coming so we had to kind of dodge those at times but um the the sailing was great at the time of year that we were there. I guess there is bad times to be there where it's just a monsoon type times. But here's the thing. You sail around. Okay, so there's like, um, how do I describe this? You have to go down and around Singapore and back up to get to like the other side of Thailand. And it's like the other side of, you go around Malaysia and back yeah, up again. Yeah. And so like there's different seasons, but you can sail like year round, but you don't want to be in, in one side of thailand on one season you want to be on the other it's kind of i'll have to show you a map or what to look it up later but there's definitely like uh, we learned yeah. there's different seasons but you can sail the whole time and there both sides are amazing at different times of the year so you can basically do it year round and still have a great sailing cruising yeah. yeah 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 that's interesting that it's like that running west to east yeah as opposed to like further in south yeah right right different yeah. different yeah. season yeah, that's it was crazy. very strange. Yeah, to 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 learn that. Is there but, a big sailing scene there? Like, were there a lot of other boats, sailboats around? There. So when we were there in January, um, there were times that we were the only boat on a mooring ball and the only boat in an anchorage. But we kind of wanted to hit like the really remote islands too. So we were like, take us, let's go to places that like a path, like Ko Pipi or Ko Fifi. If you uh, they they actually say Ko Pipi instead of Ko Fifi, but it's if you ever watched the movie, um, The Beach. Um, that's the island that's in the movie, The mm -hmm. Beach with Leonardo DiCaprio. And it's called, it's spelled P-H-I dash I, but it's pronounced Ko Pee Pee. That was very popular, a lot of boats, like long tail boats, a lot of sailboats. And then Colipe, which was the furthest island south we went to, very much tons of boats. But the islands in between, there were there was nobody there. I mean, yeah, there's the tour groups that come in with like the speed boats, but they come in for a few hours and then they leave and it's just you. And it's like, right. There's holy, always a time. Yeah. 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 So it was amazing. You know, when we were sailing yeah, south from Co, we, we, we went from Co to Co Rock and there was times that we did not see any sailboats at all. Maybe one in like eight hours we saw heading south with us. So yeah, I mean, unbelievable. Yeah. It was amazing. <laughs> How did you know Co Chang? Not like yeah, uh, I, I backpacked. I did a big Southeast Asia tour backpacking, like fresh out of college with a buddy, and we spent like a month in nice. Thailand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we I've been to Koh Phi, but just just on land. Well, we took the little. We were one of those tour boats buzzing. Oh around. yeah, yeah. We're gonna have to talk all about That's Thailand. Great. I can't wait to talk to you about that in the future. But we spent a lot of time. Like we did our backpacking version of that, and we went up to um co um or um chiang mai chiang rai chiang dao we went to the golden triangle we went down to renong we went oh, to Ko, so Ko i've told Janie how much i love northern thailand mm. yeah yeah you got to get there and we're, we're dying to go back i mean i think it for us in the future it's kind of going to depend on where we find our boat like we want to do like a another year or two of sailing um if we can and keep going if we can but i was talking to some sailors today and they were like where do you want to go and we're like well it depends on really where you get our boat but we hope that you know someday we can get back to thailand and do that again too because it was just so epic and magical yeah for sure that's keep us so in the loop cool. yeah i can't going. imagine sailing oh sailing yeah it was mm -hmm. great it was great well we we'll got only got to talk all about that another time it's such a long story <laughs> um so so what oh well, i never got to what your drink was you have a sundown or a baby down or you're oh, drinking right. Um, yeah. well, okay. Chris got for Christmas. Um, we're not really big gift people, but he did get me a proper cocktail mixing nice. set to have on the boat. Um, and a cocktail recipe book. Yeah. Oh, so I made, I made us little margaritas tonight. Um, out cool. of context, that sounds like I got her that just so she could make me cocktails, but, <laughs> but 
Janie, Janie doesn't, she doesn't do beer. She developed like a wine allergy. So she can really only do like mixed drinks. Yeah. Yeah. So we, and there was only like one that tequila. Yeah. So I rum. got her like this recipe book so she could figure out some cool mixed drinks. It was actually super thoughtful. Yeah. 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 For you. <laughs> I do take advantage sometimes. So yeah. Tonight we've That's got some marks. Uh, I nice. put mezcal in my, but mm -hmm. so, um, Speaking of recipes, do you guys have a preferred, like, uh, what's your favorite kind of, like, boat recipes to make? What do you make underway? What do you make at anchor? Do you want to go first? What's your boat food? Uh, what's your comfort food on the boat? <laughs> oh, yeah. We, we each have a go-to. Well, we do a lot of fishing. We mm -hmm. troll a lot when we're on longer passages, and I'm a pretty heavy spear fisherman. Um, so we usually have fish on the boat. And, I mean, there's a billion and one ways to prepare fish, but one way I really like to do it is if I catch sort of a more sushi grade fish, something with a nice, like clean white meat, I like to do a sashimi where I'll slice it up pretty thin and then I'll I'll mix it up in a bowl with some um, some soy sauce and some sesame oil. And then I'll lay it out on a plate, mm -hmm. either just raw or sometimes on some like water crackers mm -hmm. or something with a little slice of pickled ginger. And some sesame seeds oh it is so it good you're killing me right now that sounds oh, amazing last solid night we had what grouper was it It was a yellow tail grouper or a yellow yellow fin grouper mm -hmm. that i shot nice. which are allegedly um like higher risk for ciguatera so mm -hmm. i took one for the team and took a few bites of it like two days ago you know, and we <laughs> waited 24 hours and i didn't get sick so then we fed it to everybody once but there's lots of fish to do that once way we knew, yeah, yeah. So yeah, we prepared it with that. And then and then lately I've been getting more into like marinating my fish, which I never really would do. I would be snobby okay. about it, be like, I want to taste my fish. Like I don't want to taste the marinade. But now I'm like super <laughs> into like rubbing some like paprika and oil and things on the fish, which has been, mm. been great. And we finally got a grill. So I've been grilling the fish and not just putting it in the pan. Oh, nice. And then you go with yours. Um we well, we're heavy carb lovers <laughs> on the boat. So um <laughs> We love having bread, but it that's actually that's just super hard to come by when you leave the states. And so I found this amazing no need homemade bread recipe. Um, and it's oh. just it's with the uh, rapid rise yeast packets. And I I can't remember. It's like it's rapid rise yeast with salt, water, flour. I think that's it. And um you actually can just set it out on deck in the sun for a few hours. I guess that's the proving process. Um, and it rises really fast and then you just, you throw it in the oven. Um, I mean, oh, wow. it's a little bit more labor intensive than that, of course, but super easy ingredients. And it is the most delicious bread I think we've ever had. It's really good. Like, Having fresh bread on it. a boat is such yeah. a luxury. Yeah, it never a, lot of, a lot of people do bread when they're cruising and it is the way to go yeah. i mean i yeah. get it now. it's been awesome yeah nice bread, bread. very nice so mm -hmm. spear fishing um do you use like the the what's the is there like a in the bahamas you have to use a um like a what's called a sling how do you pull spear yeah pull spear. Well, yeah in the bahamas you can't use a spear gun so you right. can use a pull spear or a hawaiian sling a lot of people use those interchangeably but they're actually a little bit different there's pole oh. spears and there's hawaiian slings but you can use both here you just can't use a gun which is what i use what i the... started spear fishing back home can you describe the difference between a pole spear and a hawaiian sling a pole spear is what a lot of people will call a hawaiian sling where it's just a straight shaft with a with a spear tip on the end and a band on one end and you loop the band through your thumb and forefinger and then choke up on the shaft and then when you let go the tension band will fire it and you kind of have to catch the, the band a hawaiian sling is um it's usually a hollowed out um like some cylindrical piece of wood and there'll be uh like a spear gun shaft in the middle it's more like a slingshot oh it's like a hollowed out piece of wood with a band on one end and you slide a shaft through the hole in the wood i'm probably describing this really poorly <laughs> <laughs> and then you kind of like pull it back. It, by the way. So it takes it takes two hands. You kind of like hold it and then shoot the shaft out of the what I'm describing this so bad. They're they're <laughs> so if you he, understand what I'm he saying. He uses a pole spear. <laughs> but here in the Bahamas, you can use one or the other, no guns. I use a pole spear. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have a pole spear. I've never actually shot anything with it. I know I take that back. When we were in Guadalupe, we were doing target practice and we were picking up like um sea urchins that had died just like you know the white shell that's left behind and jennifer was dropping it and i was trying to shoot it as it oh. dropped 
it's C skeet. C skeet, right? Yeah. <laughs> and but so the Hawaiian sling, um, when it when it shoots out, do you do you have to retrieve the 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 projectile later, or does it like stay with the the shaft? Or I've the... never used one. I th- I don't think they have a line on them, but you could have a line yeah. on them. Yeah, I I'm guess. actually not sure. I've never I'm really used. Curious about, I'm really curious about that. Yeah, I, it's never going to go that far. So I, I think probably you wouldn't have a line. It was just introduce more drag. Okay. Yeah. Um, that makes sense. I mean, yeah, but I don't. You, you could never shoot it like so far. You wouldn't find it again. Um, really? Although I guess in that case, a fish could swim off with the shaft yeah, in it. Yeah, that's what I'm so thinking. Maybe there is a line on them. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna look here. I'm gonna look I'm that, look up, that later. up. I'm really curious about the Hawaiian sling because uh, yeah, that'd be kind of nice to to play around with that. Just I think when we finally go cruising, it's gonna be fun to have like these different kind of toys and gadgets to play around with. So, and I like the pole spear. I just haven't oh. actually I haven't actually shot a fish with it yet. But um, I saw that you guys get a lot of lobster. Like, can you describe how you actually capture the lobster? Like, that's something that I've never done either. But I see it's there's different lobster, devices for it. Yeah. How do you do that? We I I spear them so. Oh. Um, I think in Florida it's actually illegal to spear them, but you can spear them here. There's oh. usually one of two ways. People will also use a, it's like I think they call it a noose or something, which is like a rod. Here I go really bad at describing things, but there's like a rod <laughs> with a a slip line and like a noose, and you can you can slip the the noose over the lobster's tail and then tighten up on the line. You can catch them that way, which is probably sorry I'm talking loudly again. Probably better because um, if you happen to catch one that's pregnant, you can release it. You're not like hurting the lobster. Mm. Um, but a lot of people just spear them. Um, it's a lot easier to just spear them. Mm. So I just use a pole spear, and then you that's try it. and get them in the in the body so you're not damaging the the tail meat. But the thing with lobster is you really have to look like deep in the cracks and crevices of the reef if you're just swimming along the surface like looking down for lobster like looking for their little antenna Mm -hmm. you're never gonna find them like you got to be diving down i heard one person describe it as he only ever finds them inverted in other words like he's upside down like looking Uh, under places and once you start like really peeking in holes having a dive light is really helpful that's when you start finding the lobster and you just shoot him I've seen some people use what they call a tickler. Do you know how to use that? I don't understand how you use that. That's what they call them. A tickler. That, I think. A, Is that the lasso method? I think that's the lasso meth- method, but you can like tickle them to make them back up into the lasso. Oh, somehow. oh okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm not the authority on this, <laughs> on this, one, but. What's the gig that, that I was, that I would use, the but that we found our gig That was with. a pole spear. Oh. That's just a three prong pole spear. Oh, okay. Yeah. So different than yours, but yeah. three prong. Okay. So you were frog yeah. gigging a lobster is basically what I'm hearing. <laughs> we flounder gig back home. Yeah, we flounder gig. Some of my home. real down south friends do frog gig. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm in South oh, Carolina. Geez. I've heard about oh, frog gigging. <laughs> Frogging. Well, there it's we not go. As crazy oh, you're in South Carolina. Cool. In Where? Arkansas, we the noodling for the catfish. Yeah. The catfish. Oh god, <laughs> the noodling terrifies. It seems like the oh, weirdest scary level. It's pretty hardcore. That is hardcore. Yeah. yeah, respect yeah. to those folks. Um, yeah, so we're in the upstate. We're um, if you look, there's a Lake Hartwell. I don't know if you're familiar with Lake Hartwell. It's a huge lake, um, right on the border of Georgia and South Carolina. It's about a thousand miles of shoreline. Um, so it's like there's actually some really nice sailing oh, wow. grounds for a lake. I mean, today I was actually out. It was oh man, it was brutal. It was 45 degrees, but I had to um, volunteer for the um, sail committee once a year. I'm in the sailing club here. And uh, we were out with the sail, the sail, um, sailing committee, the race team committee. I'm sorry, I was in the race team committee, and uh, we had eight boats sailing and racing, and uh, it was brutally cold. So I was fantasizing about talking to you guys and hearing all about the Bahamas and the warm weather. <laughs> That's great. You still get to have a place to sail, though. I have a lot yeah, of respect yeah, for, for now, lake sailing. Yeah, I mean, we're we're lake sailing is great because you learn a lot. You're tacking a lot. You know, you're diving a lot. Um, it's oh, great. Okay learn yeah. how to sail and to continue to keep your skills up in the meantime while we bide our time until we can get out there and live the the wonderful lifestyle that we're fantasizing about that you guys are living so we're trying to you know keep our skills up and you know then we try to do some charming here and there once in a Perfect. while as well yeah yeah so I mean, we were sailors. sound sailors 
basically lake sailing before we cruise. Mm -hmm. We were just sailing on the sound for oh, years. Yeah. Same yeah, same deal, just time. tacking. Can't really go that far. So when you say the sound, is and that like you've the, got the outer banks like barrier islands that protect like the inland water, and you sail inside there? Correct. Yep. Exactly. That? The in, there is an inlet where we live, but it's a terrible it. inlet. Oh, like okay. you couldn't pay me to try and take a sailboat through that inlet. And in fact, a few of the sailboats that have tried to last minute alter course and go in the inlet, if they get in trouble, they inevitably run aground. It's, yeah. Oh, it's no. very shifty, heavy current, very shallow, yeah. poorly maintained inlet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, wow. Organ inlet. <laughs> I guess stay so. away from Morgan Inlet. Yeah, I mean, on that note, that's why we have to have an ICW compliant boat. Right. Actually, yeah, we actually have no choice to cause... get into Manio where we keep the boat. Mm -hmm. We can either go out of the Chesapeake Bay, which doesn't make sense for us because it's further north, or Beaufort Inlet is the next next mm -hmm. like viable inlet okay. for us. I saw that you had uh, were in Beaufort one of your posts, but then I think you also went to Beaufort, South Carolina. Is that right? On your way south? Yeah. We love. Beaufort, North Carolina, Beaufort, South uh -huh. Carolina. Uh -huh. Yeah. Beaufort, Beaufort, South Carolina is always going to be one of our stops. We love it there. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Okay. So we we stopped in there okay. um on a vacation. We were heading south and we stopped in there for a day and we just happened to hit it during uh I think it's called Waterfest. What an amazing festival they have there. There were so many boats like coming what and going, happened? and there's a whole like festival that happens. And I don't I think it was around, I want to say it was July time frame, maybe. Um, it was so cool. I love Buford. We were only there for like a day, but I was like, oh, we got to get back here. It looks. Oh, man. That'd be really cool to see. When was it? July? I want to say it was in July. July. Yeah, the Waterfest in July. And I mean, it was pretty epic because on, on land, they had, you know, music and booths and vendors. But then just offshore, there was like this um, like crazy flotilla of like thousands of boats. I got to say thousands of boats. Literally, it oh. was insane. It looked to me there were sailboats and power boats and everybody just looked like they were having an amazing time. Gotta get there for that, that sounds for sure. awesome. Beaufort. Now, did you guys ever stop? Did you, guys, did you guys ever stop in Charleston on your way down, or did you go? You always like blow past Charleston. I haven't. We passed Charleston. Yeah, on the way. we uh, haven't stopped there. So yeah. we stop it um in Beaufort and Savannah, which are both pretty out of the way if you're just like trying to shoot down the East Coast. Yeah, and yeah. I think because we love those two stops, we bypass Charleston. Gotcha. Yeah. 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 I think yeah. Charleston is where um, I did my I think the, um, training. Yeah, I did my training through the um, Charleston Sailing School there. Shout out to those folks, Will and Lynn. They run the Charleston Sailing School. They are absolutely amazing. Um, I did all my, um, my bareboat chartering um, training, the ASA 103, 104, I did there. And then I'll charter, we'll charter their boats because they have actually a charter fleet there. And they'll charter, they have, I think, like seven or eight really wonderful boats from catamarans to monohulls. Um, and they are like just fantastic as far as support. Um, like our our routine is like we'll come out of the Charleston, go out through the jetty, then go down the coast, and we'll tuck into like Edisto, wow. and then we'll do the ice view back to the Charleston Marina. And depending which way the weather Whoa. is going, like we'll either go like clockwise or counterclockwise. Um, yeah, and we we love going out of there. And uh, so that's like our our fantasy is to hopefully maybe do what you guys did, like move on to a boat. Maybe we can onto a boat in Charleston somewhere and kind of transition our way in style. Mm -hmm. And yes, do it. That's what we're yeah. trying to build. Towards. That's perfect. Yeah. And then you've got a great, a great inlet right there too. I mean, that's, yeah, yeah. That, that is such a blessing to have to be close to a great inlet to just I pop know. in and out whenever yeah. you want. Big open harbor right there. Oh, yeah. that's that's tough for us. Yeah. You know, um, you know Elliot Cut then. Yeah, yeah, right. I love Elliot. Uh, Cut. Yeah, we had one of our scariest experiences. <laughs> ever on a sailboat in Elliot, right there. of all the sailing we we did yeah. it was at the very end happened right in there. a little slice of the icw was like one of the gnarliest experiences we had oh no we were um we were coming back up the coast oh on the gosh. icw because a really like the nor'easter of the winter was pressing down it was i think it was one of the named winter storms mm -hmm. we knew this thing oh, was wow. coming and we were making our way up the stono river is that it are you guys still there Oh, you froze. Can you hear us? Uh oh. Crap. Gosh, it's lasted so long. We still have our connection. We'll have to edit this part out. I don't know how that works. What's going on?
check one, two. Crap. Starting. So I'll leave and try to get back in. Um, if you're doing a podcast, oh, not... he's gone. You are the host now. That's weird. I wonder if it was his connection. Can you still? Surely you can. Um, can you still like make a podcast if it's not? Yeah. We'll just have to edit this out. Well, is he on Instagram? How do you get a hold of him? Oh, yeah. Let me check on there. He's typing. Our connection's working fine, so I don't know. Said it might be on his end. She's so nice. Yeah, he's it's awesome. like crazy how much he knows about Dr. Page and their stuff. I know it's really cool. We try to. What's not working? What's not good? Yeah, yeah, we're actually doing a, we're actually in a podcast, but the, we just lost our connection. We're trying to reconnect. Maybe city, they're they're out for dinner. Are we back? Are we back? Holy moly! Oh. <laughs> Hold on, Jamie started folding some laundry. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> We're back. We're back. Got the, baby, got the baby monitor. Nice. Okay, where were we? All right. Thank you guys so much for uh, um, working through it technical difficulties that we're having i <laughs> appreciate yeah, that no problem no worries all right um oh elliot cut you're going to talk about elliot our harrowing cut. tale yes elliot please uh, <laughs> sorry we were working our way back north after our first season in the bahamas on cloud one and um a really bad nor'easter was coming i think it was like one of the named winter storms which they only do for like the really gnarly ones. And we were heading toward Charleston. And for whatever reason, in my mind, I thought that like we had already kind of gotten through the worst of it. We had we had overnighted in a really protected anchorage. And I thought that it was going to be like sort of getting calmer as we got toward Charleston Harbor. I don't know how I misread this forecast, but spoiler alert, like I fully misread the forecast. <laughs> um. So we were we were approaching Elliott Cut, which, as I'm sure you know, is notorious for like ripping current goes Crazy. in and out. Yeah. Elliot. But it's, in, it's in all the warnings on Navionics in the comments like you really have to try and time with a slack tide or at least have it going with you through this cut. It's very narrow. Mm -hmm. um, it's like flanked by rocky sort of yes. seawalled shorelines. It's like really sketchy looking. And so that was fine like we had timed it right so we we made our way into elliot cut but the wind was so strong from behind us that the entrance to elliot cut was just like a washing machine like we kind of like rocketed yeah. through it but once we were yeah. in elliot cut there was no turning around mm. to get back out of Elliot cut because that was directly no. into the wind super steep yeah. like complete wind against current situation um um so at this point it was like all right no no turning back which we weren't planning on turning back you know we're making our way north but i'm like at this point i'm like man it's like still 
cranking. Like the wind I thought yeah. would have abated a little bit by now. And we need to cross Charleston Harbor, which is quite an open body of water, um, which you would preferably yeah. not do when the wind is still blowing a gale. Um, so I'm like trying to keep my cool, like, okay, this is not what I thought it was going to be at this point. Um, we already just passed like a couple viable anchorages on the other side of Elliot Cut, which now we can't get back to because Elliot Cut is a nightmare. Um, so I'm like, well, let's just go like look, like let's just make our way through Elliot Cut, which is very protected. So like we're fine in Elliot Cut, but I'm like, let's just let's just like eke our way out and check the state of the harbor. And we kind of like make our way through. There's one bridge you have to hail, mm -hmm. and there's another bridge that we were able to get under with our mast height, and we get in view of Charleston Harbor and it's like a, a mess like it's an absolute nightmare. mess like total yeah. washing machine the wind is just ripping across and it's also ripping it's like the perfect direction where it's just shooting down whatever river that is that Ashley River probably yeah yeah whatever create Ashley River that's it yeah yeah those anchorages were a wash like the boats are just oh man swell and I'm like we're, I'm like, we're not crazy going. And I'm like, well, we're not going back out of Elliot Cut. So we're literally like trapped in Elliot Cut at this moment. And there, yeah. there's one anchorage in Elliot Cut, but it's in a very skinny, like mm -hmm. offshoot of the main canal. Yeah. And the wind yep. was so strong, we couldn't have put out enough scope to anchor there, or yeah. else we just would have been blown sure. the shoreline. I'm like, I'm literally at, at in in that moment, I'm like, I don't know what to do. So we're just like right looking now. at Navionics, and meanwhile, it's it was literally a gale, and yeah. yeah, the only place we could be was inside Elliot Cut, but there's nowhere to anchor. So wow. oh, in wow. my head, I was like, we're just gonna like pace back and forth in Elliot Cut until this. No, out. like I don't know where else to go. We're we're trapped in here, and then wow. Janie was kind of pouring over the chart while I was just like sort of eyeballing areas where maybe we could drop a hook and you found a place you said you were like what about here and i'm like looking at navionics and there's like a little bit of a bulge in mm. the canal where um but it's like 18 feet of water so i hadn't really considered it i just thought it was going to be too deep but i was looking at it and the way we were going to swing and i was like i think we'll be okay so we just went into this little area i put out all 125 feet of our chain I put out like wow. another hundred rope road and we were like, we were, we were in the, channel. we had so much scope. We, we anchored right outside of the channel. Um, oh. At that point we may have been swinging into it, but there was like no traffic. Yeah. We also <laughs> knew no one was, no one was coming through there, but we were so close to the marsh edge too, like the, oh, the way we were swinging, and our anchor dragged once and then reset. And then it like, oh. dragged again and reset and we're like holding our breath at this and moment we like fully oh, trusted man. Our tackle we had a solid what well, that we had was a 55, 55 pound mantis, mantis. It's yeah. oversized for our oh boat, yeah but we knew that if it was dragged it was pretty serious if, but it would reset if it had dragged much more we would have just been washed up onto the marsh and so we were just like holding yeah. our breath and it it set on that last one and then oh um, boy it was a long few hours of just like watching the anchor alarm and making sure we weren't dragging and listening <laughs> to the wind the boat's like healing over with no canvas up obviously but the boat's like healing over in the gusts in this channel healing at anchor yeah, yeah that isn't that nuts yeah work. we worked really yeah. really quickly we did well but i think afterward i remember i just went down below and just like buried my head in the v birth i just couldn't had to disconnect <laughs> but it was pretty silly like uh, the, one of the most moments of our whole trip was like on a protected waterway of the ICW. Like, the last Seriously. Back. We'll show you exactly where we anchored. I think we saved yeah. the, a clip of yeah, it. But yeah, yeah. Have a, a it was yeah. wild. Please send, please send me that. I'd love to share that with some of our local friends. But you were like anchored <laughs> in the pluff now. mud. That, that pluff mud, like, I mean, that stuff is just crazy gnarly as well. Like, you could have been up into that as well. The, they actually, have, they actually yeah. have a dessert down here. You ever heard of, you've heard of the pluff mud? They have like a dessert that people make down here. It's oh. like a chocolatey like cake, that, and it's called pluff mud cake. <laughs> That's so is pluff mud, mud just super mud just like super soft <laughs> and like you, you if you step into it you sink down to your knees and uh it's it's all yeah. over the marshes down there and i think yeah when you dug in with your anchor it probably wasn't holding very well and it probably slipped through that stuff yeah that's it's a crazy a uh, situation down there that's nuts. Nice. solid 
That was so terrible. Yeah, it was, it was such an interesting story. Place. It's so rare to like enter a little waterway that you like can't go back out of. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, we're stuck in here yeah. now. Like you're not going back through that. But... Yeah, that's that's mm-hmm. wild. Yeah. Yeah. There's the storms blow up fast there too. Like we were we were there in the Charleston Harbor um in July 4th weekend, la- not this past week year, but the year before. And um we I mean, the weather conditions were supposed to be great like the whole weekend. And out of nowhere, these giant clouds, dark, like just started to billow out of nowhere. They popped up. And then I've got this really amazing photo of like lightning bolts hitting the Ravenel Bridge, which is like the big like picturesque bridge that goes across the harbor. Oh, yeah. And it's just wow. crazy. These lightning bolts are actually hitting the bridge while we're sitting there. And I'm like, well, this is sketchy. <laughs> like this is scary. <laughs> It was, it's a it's an interesting yeah, right. area to sail for sure. Most of the time, most of the time it's fine. I mean, I've, we've been out gnarly. there where like, yeah, yeah. I mean, it can get gnarly. the 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 way that the current rips through there, I think, is the most you know, this the most wild thing of how fast it can rip through. And the the tides are like you, know, you can have like a king tide. It's like six and a half feet in that area, oh, yeah, which is completely too. insane yeah. to deal with. It's yeah, wild. yeah. I'd but I'm sure you're with that in North Carolina. Yeah, we don't so have them what are, too. What are some of your favorite? Oh, sorry, I was going to jump into Go like, what are some of your favorite like anchorages and stuff that you hit when you're on your way down and back up again? Not Elliot Cut. Oh. <laughs> oh. Um, oh, sure. on the East Coast. I mean, surprisingly, we've only anchored there once, but Cape Lookout is an awesome mm. spot. The Cape Lookout Bite is a sick anchorage. Mm-hmm. Where's that? Where's that? Um, so just outside of Beaufort, if you go out of Beaufort Inlet and go north, or maybe okay. the way that coast faces, you might be going east actually. But the Cape Lookout Bite, mm-hmm. so there's the Cape, the Cape Lookout Lighthouse with the diamond markations on it, um, and you just anchor behind the Cape there, and it's pretty much 360 degree protection. You have Shackleford Banks right there, which is a beautiful stretch of secluded, undeveloped beach with wild horses on it. Mm-hmm. And then you've got the Cape Lookout oh, National nice. right there. Yeah, it's a sick area. It's and and awesome. Beaufort's right there, too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Where else do we like to anchor along the eastern East Coast? We love Oriental. Um, Oriental, North Carolina. Oh, yeah. Is heard good things. Yeah. Oriental is so cool. I think we should give some credit to a lot of people bypass all of Georgia. If you're if you're going down the, or up the East Coast, mm-hmm. um, going offshore um, of Georgia is is probably advised. But we've said earlier we love going to Savannah. Yeah. Um, Savannah is not directly on the ICW, but um, Thunderbolt Marina. It's not an anchorage, but if anyone finds themselves in that area if you want to go to savannah recommend thunderbolt marina yeah so like slightly off topic there are anchorages yeah. there oh yeah there but are we like anchorages. we like the marina because it's just easy to get to shore and get an uber into savannah Such we have such a cool area yeah. like we mentioned we met in savannah so that's a, a stop yeah. for us yeah. oh and anchorage um, is the cool. beaufort anchor beaufort anchorage right downtown we love that easy quick dinghy ride to yeah. town we stay in the saint augustine Get a mooring ball at St. Augustine. Mm-hmm. We love that as a stop. We do a lot of big love hops. Saint off- yeah. St. Augustine's cool. Yeah, East Coast, the yeah. we really try and do big jumps offshore and then just like anchor for a night. And then our, our, our crossing point uh, uh from Florida has been no name. We love no name harbor. Yep. That's just a great okay. spot in Key Spain. Really good yeah. place to stage for a crossing of the Bahamas. Mm-hmm. Oh, great tip. Thank you for that. Appreciate that. So where where about are you guys right now? Like I don't know if you want to give the exact location, but where about are you? Oh, we're in Chub Key Marina in the Barry Islands in the Bahamas. Mm-hmm. Okay. So cool. this is what are this is, what are some of your favorite? Is, oh, say again. What are, uh, I was gonna say, what are some of your favorites um, through the Bahamas? I know Barry Islands is one of your favorites for sure, but what are oh, some of your other favorites yeah. along the through the Bahamas? Um, anchorages. Yeah, where would you advise? In the Barry Islands, Hoffman Key. Yeah. Hoffman's okay. Key is cool. It's a blue hole there. Um, but it's a Ooh. blue hole sort of in the middle of the island. So you you hike, it's not a long hike, but you hike up and you can sort of cliff jump off into this blue hole. And it's just a beautiful Hoffman anchorage. Key is gorgeous. There's really good spearfishing yeah. there. There's reef, really good reef a little bit north around Soldier Key, which is awesome spearfishing. Um our favorite anchorage in 
all of the Bahamas that we've been to is called Schooner Key, mm -hmm. which is off of Cape Eleuthera. And there's all these little sandbanks. You can see it on Google Earth, just these crazy shallow sandbars off of Cape Eleuthera. Very bottom of Eleuthera, yeah. And it's mostly just shallow sand that's dry at low tide. But there's like two or three little islands that have formed um, with like actual vegetation and trees. And they're called the Schooner Keys. And they're sort of out oh, of awesome. the way. And the, it's not well charted. So you kind of have to visually navigate your way through. When we went in Cloud One, mm -hmm. she was a deeper draft boat. She drew five and a half. And um, we made sure the sun was high. Hi, sun. And I we, took the drone we up. used the drone. <laughs> to sort of like see where the deep water is. <laughs> Brilliant. Are. You just yeah. follow the deep water around. And it um, worked too. Really yeah. sick island we just That's had a whole anchorage. island to ourselves yeah. yeah we were the only ones there oh, besides the two ospreys sounds, that live that on the sounds island. magical i love it what, uh, side are, note, it's a charted side note is, yeah mm -hmm. on, on, as a side note um i did want to ask you that you have some great drone footage you mind me asking what is the drone that you're flying right now i'm using the mavic air 2s so it's one of their smaller okay. ones it's not their pro model it's not the yeah. mavic but it's smaller and lighter um and it's been serving us very well so i mean dji is kind of the go-to any of the dji drones but the, the air mm -hmm. models and the mavic models are the best yeah i've got a mavic air i think is the mavic air is what i've got and i really have some great footage from that but i'm not as i'm not using it enough and i'm not the expertise that you have it looks like you're taking some amazing photos i love your drone footage really good hard stuff. to get bad aerial photo in the bahamas it's like so, so beautiful fun, from yeah. the air to get that perspective and the yeah. color and the water and everything is, is awesome cool um just i don't i don't want to take up too much of your time i've already taken so much and i really appreciate it um what what are a couple of like, this is really fun i really enjoy this what are some cool. uh boat gadgets like what kind of like toys do you have on the boat or like kitchen gadgets or just boat gadgets or like like essential like boat gadgets that like you're like we can't do without this we love these devices I feel like you're gonna be good at answering this one. Will you talk about like toys? I'm trying to think of stuff in the galley. Mm. Uh bread maker, ice maker. <laughs> no, you know oh, what? your little ice, your little ice things. My ice things. The pop. What do oh, you even call um, them? Silicone. Oh yeah. Uh, well, well, on the silicone, anything. So silicone, um, like cube trays for freezing food to store and for just like big cocktail ice cubes. Um, and then we got from, there's other cruisers. I don't know if you know Ajax. Where is Ajax on Instagram? They're these really popular. Shout out Ajax. Yeah, popular sailors. Um, <laughs> she she taught uh, or she told us about this um, ice. It's an ice tray, but it, it's enclosed so if you have a funky freezer on a boat like a drop down or something um you fill the tray with water and it, spill. and it can't spill so you can just like toss it in whatever strange makeup of, of a freezer you have on board so that's been great but and the then, benefit um, of the cool thing about that is the way you like fill it yeah and um it's like an accordion style almost so when it once the cubes freeze you pop it open and you can just dump all the cubes out yeah we're talking way too much about oh. an ice cube tray like that's ice, ice on a boat. Oh, I love it. Cubes are huge. Oh no, boat. Yeah. Yeah. No, Jennifer. <laughs> Jennifer is like number one request. She's like, we have to have an ice maker or some way to get ice because like she's like can't do it without wow. ice. Yeah. So I'm like, all right. Oh, that's the <laughs> good to know. The water maker. This we finally have a water maker. Oh yeah. gosh, yeah. The, the water Rain Man maker. water maker. Oh, that's just like total game changer. Mm -hmm. USB chargeable things. So like these lamps are pretty cool uh, gadgets. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So like this isn't drawing well we're plugged in right now but like this won't draw off our battery bank it's just wireless usb oh, nice. lamps yeah. like wireless USB, everything mm -hmm. speakers um oh. there is one thing i do have to ask you about there was a post you had that talked about a do-it-yourself autopilot what was that you did like uh, your own the, like your install oh, on cloud one i just installed the autopilot myself on cloud one so it was a ray marine oh, okay. autopilot i did the full he, on okay. install of credit on a boat that was never designed to have an autopilot yeah yeah they didn't have them in 1964 <laughs> yeah or nice. not electronic ones at least and so um yeah no Good i just, just done the full installation myself which was incredible. probably the most major thing i did on that boat that and the ac oh, cool. very cool <laughs> air 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it was not. I did not. You did your own. I did not invent an autopilot. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering because you know you got the you got the the wind vane and then you got the electronic autopilot. So I was like, did he invent something new? Like, what did he? Oh, that'd be so cool. <laughs> no, I did not have the brain for that. <laughs> but you did you install your own AC? Did you say the air conditioner on Cloud One? I did that install too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that refit was just so intensive, and like so many of the 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 parts were so expensive that we just couldn't afford to like hire the labor to install everything. So mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Impressive. Yeah, so. Good job. Yeah. Very thanks. Cool. That, was, that was a proud moment. The air conditioner and the autopilot were proud. proud which one, which one are you, do you feel more proud of? Probably autopilot. Yeah. That autopilot just <laughs> have changed everything. Yeah. I, yeah. Could, I could feel mm -hmm. your energy. Like when you wrote the post, it was like big, bold letters, like it worked. You know, I could tell that you were very such a happy cool feeling to hit that button for the first time. And also after oh, hand steering for years. Yeah, we, we had oh, a long yeah. gosh, just hand. slavishly at the yeah, helm. Yeah. And then yeah. to finally I'll like go to like push a button and like walk away. It was like, holy crap. One part of our story that I do love is that we did start with just a bare shell, you know, a really nice fiberglass hull of a shell yeah but we learned as we went and we installed everything and we made everything and you know where we are now this is awesome this is you know we've but we've paid our dues we yeah, yeah like we learned on something very simple it's so, weird to go from a boat where i built everything so i like knew mm -hmm. every like the ins and outs of everything on that boat to come to a prefab boat and sort of have to like reverse engineer how like to figure out how everything works like i'm still learning this it's boat. a different relationship yeah very cool um i i really appreciate you guys i think we should probably have gone really long and you guys are probably tired you had a long day you put the kid <laughs> down oh, it's okay. you're probably it's ready do it again yeah i really appreciate it thank you so much i want to say thank you not just for me but for all the folks that like we drive back and forth to work for an hour every day sitting in traffic losing our minds and we listen to stuff like this and you inspire us and thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us um it's, it's just awesome um one last thing like you know one last shout out to your company what is the company where we can do wedding venue photos all productions swellfilms.com mm -hmm. awesome. all your video and then videos. perfect and then where can people find you you have an instagram that's um sailing cloud one or two and then do you have a sailing website cloud two. yeah do you have a website or uh facebook we never never finished it we have youtube but we haven't we haven't done anything since we became cloud two, although we are planning on it. We have mm -hmm. been filming a little bit. So which is cool. all linked on our Instagram. The Instagram is kind of the main Instagram is the best place to find yeah. it's mm -hmm. at perfect cloud number two. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, perfect. We're gonna and, there. and we are so happy and proud to, to inspire, if you will, other people. And we're very invested in this lifestyle and we have a lot. We're very happy to share things that we've learned along the way so i will i would encourage people if you have questions or if you want to do this reach out to us we're happy to answer questions dm us whatever like we geek out on this stuff we're happy to talk more about like finances and i know it's taboo don't talk about money in this country but like we're very happy to talk about money and how to plan and financially plan and we're open books um, mm -hmm. Thank you so much. You guys have been Thank fantastic. You. I really, really appreciate this. Love awesome. this. I can't yeah, wait to meet yeah. up with you guys someday out there. Let's so, yeah, we'll let's talk. go we'll together. We'll one state away. Let's do it. Yeah. All right. Let's do it. Yay. All right, buddy. I'm so happy. Cool. All right. Thank you so much. Hey, Thanks, best right. travels and sweet dreams and hug that little one as much as you can because they grow up so fast. Oh my gosh, there's going to yes, be a day. There's going to be a day when you put them down and you never pick them up again. And that blows my don't mind. Say that. Don't, don't say that. Don't say that. Don't say that. Oh, right. No. Oh, no. So pick them up as much oh, as you can. Then I'm done. I know. It's all. It's all right. Oh, all. You're right. Thank you. Take right, care, you guys. Take care. Can't wait right. to hear from you guys again. Yeah. I'm going to follow you a lot. We're going to send everybody your way. Take care. Bye bye. Thanks, babe. Bye. Well, that's a wrap. We absolutely love Chris and Janie. And we hope you check them out on Sailing Cloud 2 on Instagram. And please uh, support us by liking, sharing, uh, subscribing on YouTube, Instagram, and everywhere else on the socials. And if you can, support us on Patreon if you want to see more content like this. Thanks again. Loved having this chat. 
and hope we see you out there on the water someday. Sky, my paradise.